In today's class, I'm going to do my best to break down all of the fundamental basics of astrology. The goal is to get you running with this ancient wisdom so that like by the end of this class, you could see how to apply astrology, how to understand it, how to start reading your chart or reading other people's chart. That's the goal. I'm not going to go. I'm not, I don't know how well I can do this in an hour or in under an hour, but I'm going to do my darn best to get you uh, going with this this science, this wisdom, this art. Uh, I'm astrologer. I'm your astrologer. I'm Christian Klausner, and I've been doing astrology for the last, um, I think, 13, 14 years now. I've been doing it professionally for the last, I think, eight or nine years. So um, I love this art so much. It is the most amazing way to really know yourself. And the best way you know, to read your chart is not to read your fortune, but it is to understand the deeper layers of your soul and what makes your soul unique the reason you look different from everybody else and sound different and act different is because of your soul your soul is the unique part of you and so when we understand how that's wired and how it works then we start to understand why your personality shows up in a certain way and we can only change what we can bring awareness to so by bringing awareness to our deeper soul qualities we can create a personality that's actually meaningful to us to um, to express and to have as a tool to exhibit our core self. So that's, I think, the most profound way to use your birth chart is for self-understanding. And um, I think that's important to understand because, uh, you know, astrology is kind of used in a superficial way in the mainstream, uh, just personality focus. But when we start focusing on the soul, now that provides real meaning and depth to the personality, and it allows us to get at the source of what's being expressed. So I'm going to do my darn best to, uh, to get you running with all of the fundamentals, as I said, here in astrology in less than an hour. Let's go. Let's Let's do our best. Um, I'm going to pull up my whiteboard here. Give me one sec. Okay, so this was from our last class, last week's class. If you want to join these classes, all you have to do to do that is let me know that you want to join. And that's it. And you can join. So these classes are free. They're every Friday. If you want to, I mean, they're for now, you know, it could change if you're watching this video in the future. But if you want to join these classes, all you have to do is let me know and you will get the invite. All right. So in our last class, we looked at the Zodiac as a whole, the Zodiac as a whole. And we looked at um, how the fire, earth, air, and water signs are all connected, how they create these triangles. So that's a bit advanced. We're going to start from scratch here. And I'm going to treat this as though you've never heard of astrology pretty much we're going to start from the bottom all right so the first thing with astrology is understanding the difference between signs and planets i'm not going to get into the astronomy behind it right now how you know what the ecliptic is and how it intersects with the equator and how that creates the the solstice uh, i mean the equinoxes and the solstices i've covered those in earlier classes so but in this class, we're just going to get into how to understand astrology. So first, we have the signs. The signs are these 12 segments in the sky that the sun and moon all pass through. Sun, moon, and planets, they all pass through this belt. This belt is the zodiac. That's the zodiac belt. It's not the stars. It's not the constellations. It is these 12 equal segments in this belt. Okay, the backdrop of the stars changes through the procession of the equinox. That's why people say that Aries is not Aries anymore. It's actually Pisces now. It's because of the procession of the equinoxes. They don't understand those are the constellations, not the signs. We're dealing with the signs. Signs are segments, equal degrees of, of 12 in the heavens, okay? So these signs are, they are, um, different character traits through which the planets shine through okay so essentially 
the zodiac is the whole circle of the psyche. So we've got a whole circle. Okay, not bad. <laughs> and the psyche is circular in its shape. The psyche is circular. Uh, if it were to have a shape, it would be a whole circle because this symbolizes wholeness and there's no rough edges and there's no holes in it. It's one whole circle. All right, so we divide that into two. Now we have the left and the right, masculine and feminine, yin and yang. So the one divides into two, creates duality. Then we divide it further and we have this cross. Now we have motion. Now we have the four corners of the world, north, east, south, west. And we have the four elements, which creates the material world, fire, earth, air, water. Okay, so then we further divide that into two slices in each of these segments, and that gives us the 12. It gives us 12 slices. And that's the zodiac. So we'll fill this in which, with each of the, the zodiac's um, symbols. But actually, no, we won't, because we've done that in a past class. But the planets then shine through this zodiac which is the heaven, the, this thing that surrounds the earth in the heavens. And as the planets shine through it, we get these different qualities. So the main one is the sun. This is the symbol of the sun. Wherever the sun is, whatever sign that sun is in, if it's in Aries at the time of your birth, you say, I am an Aries. The sun is the life at the heart of all living creatures the individualized awareness, which recognizes I exist, I am. This is God within all. This is the light in the heart. And so the reason we say I am in Aries when the sun is in Aries is because the sun is the inner I am. All right, then we have the moon. The moon reflects the light of the sun in the same way that the mind reflects the light of consciousness. And by reflecting this light of consciousness, we develop personalized views and we feel. We feel things based on these views. So if I feel that I am smart, if I, if I think, if I identify as being smart, then I will feel smart. I will attract circumstances and experiences that cause me to feel like I'm smart. If I feel that I am stupid, then I will feel stupid and I'll my experiences will validate that feeling. So this is an interesting thing between the sun and the moon. Wherever your sun is in your chart, that's your identity, your conscious purpose, your sun sign. Wherever your moon is, it shows where you're reflecting this light of I am, this consciousness. So for me, I have the sun in Leo. I also have my moon in Leo. So I'm a double Leo. I feel like a Leo and I am a Leo. So there's a lot of Leo there. Let's say I'm a uh, let's say I'm an Aries sun. So I am Aries and we'll get into each of these qualities of the signs. But if I am an Aries and then let's say my moon is in Gemini, the sign of communication, my consciousness is is coming through this Aries fiery head first energy. So I'm impulsive, I go in head first, but the moon is reflecting it in Gemini, making my my uh my impulsiveness, my fiery qualities of impulsivity and courage to be reflected in a way where I need to communicate it, where I need to communicate myself. So there's a brief introduction to the sun and moon. And so then we can go through all the planets. All these planets represent different instincts, different centers of instinct. And so we'll get into what that is. All right, so we have 12 signs. Twelve signs. And we have 10 planets. Once you understand the 12 and the 10, and you understand the language, this is the alphabet of astrology. Once you understand the alphabet, now you can create the language. Okay? So it's really, it is that simple. Uh, 12 signs, 10 planets. Then we add in the houses. There's 12 houses, and those houses correspond exactly to the signs. So once you understand the signs, you can understand the houses pretty easily. Once you grasp the signs and the planets, you now pretty much know astrology. You know, 
enough, you know enough to build a language where you can start to interpret your charts. All right, so we'll go through the 12 signs. First one, the first sign is Aries. This is the symbol for Aries. It looks like a fountain or a blade of grass shooting up. It's the first sign of spring. Okay, so here is Aries. I don't know why I did that in all caps. I'm not writing in all caps this whole time with all the <laughs> signs, but here we have Aries. This is a fire sign, okay? Aries says, I am. That's actually the key phrase for Aries, is I am. Number two, we have Taurus. Taurus is the second sign. Taurus. Taurus is the bull. Aries is the ram. Taurus is the bull. Bull and the ram, these are just symbols so that we can understand these signs better. And Taurus is an earth sign. And Taurus says, I have. So you can think of a two-year-old for the second sign Taurus. When a two-year-old becomes two, that toddler starts saying, mine, 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 because now the consciousness is being aware of that it is possible to own things that are yours. So this is, this is fascinating to the two-year-old brain. And this is what Taurus is about. It's about values, ownership, starting to stabilize the identity in Aries. And we stabilize our identity based on the resources that we have to create our identity. Or, you know, once you know who you are, you know what you want kind of a thing. So each of these signs are going to build on each other. And then we have number three, which is Gemini. Here's the twins. This is the third sign. This is an air sign. So now Gemini... This is the stage at which the self wants to reach out and create connections. So Gemini says, I think. This is the thinking part of us. The part that starts to build associations mentally and starts to reach out into the environment. Gemini rules local travel, siblings. The siblings are the ones that we start to reach out with first to understand. And so this is like, you know, you could say this is like age three where Maybe you're old enough now to actually have a sibling because like a few years have gone by. Your parents could get pregnant again and have a sibling. And now you're starting to understand that, you know, how to share, how to cooperate. And that's what Gemini is all about. Then we've got, uh, so these are the spring signs, okay? Spring. These form the spring. What for us is the spring here in the Northern Hemisphere. One, two, three. All right, fire, earth, air. So Aries is fire. Taurus is earth. And Gemini is air. So what are these four elements? Well, the four elements before we get into the next signs are four different ways that the ego interprets reality. So fire is the principle of identity. It shines the light, which is awareness. And it says, I am with the first sign, which is fire. Fire goes first. It's impulsive. All the qualities of fire are the qualities of these people who are born under fire signs. So it's very, it's very understandable and intuitive if you understand what it means for a person to be fiery. Okay. Then we have earth. Earth is concrete, solid. So these people are the, uh, they're the principle of, um, of security and uh, substance and materializing. Security. So these people are all about being practical, solid, they're very down to earth people, fire people. Then we have air. Air is the mental or thinking principle. These are the thinking types. They know through rationality, through logical analysis. They love to talk. They love to explore different ideas. Air lacks the most substance, right next to fire. Us fire signs are like, we're very in the clouds. We're very abstract. 
we like to apply ourselves through action for sure, but it's always about, it's not so much about the action itself as it is how we're revealing ourselves to ourselves or to the world through that action. So fire can be very dramatic, of course. Earth can be very practical and very, you know, careful and cautious. Then earth is very abstract and very thinking and communicative. Then last, we have water. So we've got 12 signs with three signs in each of these elements, making 12 in all. So broken down that way, this is going to be pretty easy. There's not too many variables here. Once you understand these principles, astrology gets very easy and intuitive. And water is the feeling principle. Okay? These people understand things through feeling, through intuitive value judgments. Does this hurt? Does this feel good? Is this pleasure? Is this pain? These people pr provide the moisture in life and the, you know, the softness, the flexibility, and the ability to nurture so this is what creates the glue in our relationships, emotional connections. So here we have these four types, these four main types. This is how our reality is comprised through these four elements. Similarly, this is how the psyche is comprised as within, so without. The way that the universe is, our universe is built is built on these four. This is a quaternary universe, according to the occultists. So is our psyche. Our psyche has these four. It's synthesized by a fifth secret element, which contains and holds them all together into manifestation, which you could liken to your awareness. You're aware of all these four in this universe. That's the fifth. Some say it's the ether, whatever. I think it's the awareness because for any of these to arise, they have to arise within awareness. Okay. So we did the first three signs. We did the spring signs. Now we're going to get into the summer signs. Now for the summer signs, we have starting summer is our fourth sign, which is cancer. Cancer. Cancer is, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't start with the uh, symbol. Here's the symbol. It is basically a sideways six and a nine. This represents giving and taking on an emotional level. And the, these also represent the crab claws as well as the breasts, which cancer rules. Cancer rules the, the breast, the chest, the home of the heart. Cancer says, the key phrase is, I feel. I feel. Cancer starts to be that intuitive feeling aspect. And this is the start of summer. Cancer is the summer solstice sign. As soon as the sun enters the sign of cancer, we are now in the summer solstice. Number five, middle sign of summer is Leo. This is the symbol for Leo. We've got a circle and then it curves up and curves down. That's the tail of the lion. Here's the head of the lion. This is also the, the heart and here's the spine, both of which Leo rules. Leo, this is our second fire sign to appear. Leo says, I show. Leo also says, I create. But it's about showing, showing forth. This is what I love to do. I love showing you guys how this stuff works. I love showing. I love showing up. I love being the show. Leo is here to create. It's a very creative principle. Okay. Just like in the summer, we all show off our bodies with our bikinis at the river. It's all about showing. Number six, we have the sixth sign, which is Virgo. With Virgo, we've got this M, basically an M, and then it's got a tail that sticks out and then crosses. Her legs are crossed because she's a virgin, Virgo. Now, the son of God, which is Leo, this is the only sign ruled by the sun, is born of a virgin, which is an interesting symbol. But of course, Leo comes before Virgo because a lot of the esoteric mysteries, you have to reverse the spheres to really understand it. Anyways, here with Virgo, we've got an earth sign. And Virgo says, I uh, analyze. I analyze. Okay. Analysis is the key to Virgo because the virgin is about purity. How do we arrive at the purity of a thing? We have to analyze it. We have to study it. 
Virgo rules, uh, you know, the stomach, the digestive tract. And this is a very analytical part of our body. It's always, it's sorting. It's finding out, okay, this is a nutrient. This is waste. This goes here. That goes there. We'll send this over there to the different parts of the body. So the digest digestive tract is um, all about sorting, organizing, and finding a use for what we have ingested. These are summer signs. And these signs are the warmest signs. Some of the warmest people. Um, the spring sign people are very warm as well, but cancer is all about feeling and giving and receiving emotional warmth and nurturance. Leo is all about creating and showing forth and providing, you know, insight in a package that's colorful and, um, sometimes, you know, indulgent of self-expression. And then Virgo is the sign of analysis. It's where after you create something, you start to notice all the things that are wrong with it. And you start to go, oh, okay, I can do better with this, do better with that. So it's very critical energy, very mental. And so those are the summer signs, okay? Those three. All right, now we'll get into the fall signs. So fall kicks off with the seventh sign, which is Libra. Here's how you do Libra. You do a setting sun sort of a thing. And then another line, horizontal line underneath that. That's Libra. The scales, the setting sun. This is the fall of the sun. That's why it's called fall. Because now the sun is falling into the southern regions. So now we're dealing with the southern signs. Libra. Libra has a lot. is, is our second air sign has a lot to do with this. If we study the etymology of this, it has to do with library. It has to do with, um, you know, books and studies and everything, and especially law. So, you know, the scales is a symbol in the USA for the law system, for the judicial system, the courts. And Libra is the diplomat, and it's all about justice, the scales of justice. What Libra says is, I weigh. Libra is about fairness, especially social fairness. And Libra has an eye for that because it's a sign of harmony and relationship. It understands the different relationships to things and what is appropriate, what is balanced, what is not balanced. So this is the first opposition. This is the first sign opposite Aries that we have here. And this is the first sign of the fall. So as the solar energy starts to decline, we start to ask, what is the balance here? Because the darkness is encroaching in by this fall season for those of us in the Northern Hemisphere. Then we have Scorpio, another M, and it curves up at the end like that with a little devil tail. That's the stinger of the scorpion. Scorpio. So after we have the partnership and the handshake in Libra, in Scorpio, we have the deeper aspect of relationship. This is the sign of sex. Death and rebirth. Uh, la petite mort is French for orgasm. It a, means mini death. La petite mort means a mini death. <laughs> so that's interesting. And Scorpio is about the death of the self, which is really what happens when we fully merge emotionally and fully intimately with another person, with the world or whatever. We This is a new identity that's created through that process. So Scorpio says... Uh, I transform. Uh, Scorpio also says, I desire. You could say transform, but another another really good one here is I desire. Scorpio is about the desire nature, which really develops once you start to perceive. And Libra is about perception because it requires perception to find the balance. Once you perceive an object of your, uh, an object that arouses desire, now you're desiring it. So that's Scorpio deals with the darker, more raw aspects of our human nature. Then we come to the ninth sign, which is Sagittarius. Very easy symbol here. It's just an arrow pointed, slanted diagonally up, upwards with a little line there in the middle. All right, and then we've got, so this is Sagittarius. This is our third fire sign here. Scorpio is a water sign. Did I mention that? Sagittarius is the third fire sign. It's all about philosophy, really expanding that fire. 
it's a sign of travel. Sagittarians love hiking. They love the outdoors because they rule the thighs and the glutes in the body. Scorpio rules the genitals. Libra rules the kidneys and the lumbar region, which is our center of gravity. Uh, about four fingers below your belly button. That's your center of gravity called the Dantian in Chinese uh, medicine. And so, yeah, Libra being the balance, that's this balance, the center of gravity. Um, these are our private parts, Scorpio, the things we keep hidden. So it's a sign of hidden things. And then Sagittarius is a sign of travel, being the, the glutes and the thighs, the biggest muscles in the body. So this is a big, powerful sign here, Sagittarius. And it's about, um, you know, using that fire for a directed purpose. So for philosophy, for religion, for keeping society as a whole warm. And uh, Sagittarius says, I believe it's, yeah, I see. Sagittarius says, I see. It's about seeing the bigger, broader picture. All right. So these signs are the fall signs. Fall. These are the autumn signs. Very good. Once again, number seven, Libra is air. Number eight, Scorpio is water. Number nine, Sagittarius is fire. And that's our last fire sign. Now we get into the winter signs and there's no fire in the winter. Okay, now we come to number 10. These are the winter signs. Winter, number 10, number of completion is Capricorn. A sign about completing and achieving. So here's how you do the symbol. We start off with a V that has a little tail there. Then we come down and we do a circle right there. That's the kneecap, which Capricorn rules the knees. And then it curves in like this. So this is the goat. This is the sea goat. Cap -ri corn. Capricorn. All right, this is a sign of achievement, accomplishment. This is the last earth sign. So it's really about achieving and accomplishing on a, as broad a level as possible. This is the organized state and government. This is law, laws, rules, and structures that we all have to adhere to if we want to exist together as a collective whole. Capricorn is the winter solstice. So this is what starts the winter. And this is the solstice sign, the darkest time. This is when we have Christmas, when the sun dies, the son of God dies and is reborn. Capricorn says, I believe it says, I use. Yes, it does. It says, I use. Capricorn babies, if you have any Capricorn babies, um, you know you got to keep them busy. You got to give them something to use, something to do. They need to stay busy. These people want to be useful. That's a really big need for them deep in their soul. Number 11, we have Aquarius, which is a couple of lightning bolts. This is also the water flowing from the urn of heaven. And it's not a water sign as much as many people want to think it is. It's an air sign. Aquarius, our last air sign. This is about really broad humanitarian connecting mentally. And the water poured from heaven is the mental nourishment as we get closer and closer to truth. So truth sets us free. And this is the nourishing waters on the mental plane that nourish us just like water does when we arrive at truth together as a whole society. And when society functions together at the level of truth and not lies, we will arrive at this infinite uh, nourishment in this heavenly uh, sustenance that we can all drink from eternally and infinitely. As society is built on lies, then of course we have the reverse of this. We have um, corruption and, and you know, it's a mess. That's what we're dealing with right now. Um, and so and that's why we're moving into the age of Aquarius so that we can overcome this. Aquarius says, I know. That's the key phrase. I know. You hear them say this a lot. I know. Or they always tell you about what they know. And because as the last air sign, it's about, okay, what's really true? So they want to arrive at truth, but they also want to become totally free. So you'll either see these people are truthers, like fanatics about the truth, or they are just so built, bent on freedom, freedom. They don't want to be constrained by anything. So it's kind of strange because Leo wants an identity. This is the opposite sign of Aquarius, Leo. And it wants to show that forth. But Aquarius is like, I want to be free from identity. Kind of interesting. 
All right, number 12, the last sign is Pisces. We got two crescents here like this, uh, tethered together with a horizontal line, which represents the two aspects of the soul and its ebb and flows connected through the horizontal line. And horizontal lines tend to represent consciousness. This is Pi Cs. The Vesica Pisces is when these two things overlap. And this right here is called a Vesica Pisces. It's an eyeball. And this is a very interesting and mysterious symbol. Um, can't don't We don't have time in this class to go into all that. But when you go like this, look, we get a fish. Interesting. The Christ was the prophet to arrive at the end of the age of Pisces, and he's known as the god of the fish. However, some people think the sun was, the procession was still in the sign of Aries, so some call him the lamb of God. So this is connected. Everything's connected astrologically to, because astrology is the root of all the religions. I know it's very triggering for the more dogmatic types, but I'm sorry, that's the fact. So as we study astrology, we're studying the roots of all the world religions. Just think of how profound that is. And I understand if you don't fully understand how that could be yet, because we still got a long ways to go with studying this subject. Pisces says, I perceive. Whoops, what am I doing? How do we spell? I perceive. Okay. Did I spell that right? Yes. No, I didn't. <laughs> There's an I here. Uh, I perceive. Oops, not there. And that's kind of the energy of Pisces. It can be very confused because all the boundaries are dissolved in Pisces. I perceive. I before E except after C. Remember? Christian? Yes, I do. Okay. I perceive. Pisces perceives directly into the void. Because this is the last sign, so all boundaries are dissolved at this place. So this is about pure release into back into our source. These are the winter signs. Because God and God's true nature is something that transcends this reality. So for us to really connect with the object of our worship, we have to transcend our own limited consciousness. And so to do that, we have to transcend all appearances, all things known. We have to go into a deep liminal space. So that's really what Pisces is about. It's the final frontier where at the last stage, we either fully release ourselves into the truth and perceive it. Or there's always two sides to every sign. And I guess we'll get into that next class since we're almost out of time here. Or you get even more lost in your delusions and the accumulation of karma and you start the whole wheel over again. <laughs> so yeah, Pisces is that final, that final gate. Are you, are you ready to release all past identifications and your connection to matter and your attachments or... Are you going to double down? So Pisces people tend to either be priests, sages, teachers, or they tend to be drug addicts, homeless people on the street, um, because they're always looking for that transcendence. So they either find it in God or religion or spirituality or in yoga or something, or they find it in, you know, just de detaching and um, dissociating and getting into drugs and other transcendent transcendental ways of experiencing so these are the final signs. As you can see, they're very bent on transpersonal things, which really start in Sagittarius, um, you know, transpersonal pursuits and um, things that apply to the whole larger world. It's about getting ready for death, basically, you know, in Aries, we're building our identity and, you know, especially the first four signs, these are the things that pertain to the personal self. I am, I have, I think, I feel. But then we start to uh, develop into higher and higher, uh, you know, considerations about, about life and what life is about and how to start to merge. And it really happens at the halfway point in Libra. This is where we become balanced and we start to understand that, okay, I'm an individual, but I live with other individuals. 
So at that point, after Libra, the fall of the sun, remember the sun is the I am, the sun starts to take a more of a back seat as it dips down into the underworld. So astrology is a, an amazing study of the cycles of nature and of the heavens, and it reveals how these same cycles are found within our own selves. And so the, as we understand reality without, we can understand reality within. The key for the aspirant or the neophyte, the student, is to understand how to create the bridge of the connection between the within and, with, and the without, and understanding that they are not separate in any way. So here's these key expressions for you to see. I'm sharing my screen. These are the key expressions, um, if you didn't get them. Aries is the I am, Taurus is I have, Gemini is I think, Cancer is I feel, Leo is I will, Virgo is I analyze, Libra is I weigh, Scorpio is I desire, Sagittarius I see, Capricorn I use, Aquarius I know. So you can screenshot this if you want. And here in your first packet in my astrology course, this uh, first assignment here has everything you need, all the signs, all the symbols to all the planets and all the sign, uh, the, the planets and the signs, all the symbols. And it explains everything here. It also gives you some things you can fill out here with your own birth chart so you can start to understand that and the psychological functions of all the planets. We'll get into that in the next class. We'll get, we'll get more deep into that. But um, here's the last thing I want you to take away from. There are skillful and unskillful applications to each of these signs. So Aries, that can be very initiating, starting, pioneering, and innovative because it's the first sign. So it's this first push, right? This first push toward self-consciousness. However, what are the negatives of that? Well, the negatives are they could be rash, reckless, careless. They start things, but they don't finish. They're combative aggressive, overpowering, overbearing, and coarse. So to understand these skillful and unskillful applications can be so insightful if you understand these as an Aries or if you have planets in Aries. And then the really last thing I want to leave you with is the understanding of how these things progress in, in our psyche as it corresponds to these seasons. So, um, so basically here in this diagram, we got Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer. So these first four signs are personal. They're personal signs. It's an orientation. So they're focused on personal needs and wants. It doesn't mean they're selfish. It just means as the soul incarnates in these, these signs, the soul is here to learn how to be selfish and what the lesson is there. If you're not joyful, if you don't have a full cup, then, you know, how can you fill anyone else's cup? You come first. If you're not healthy, how are you going to help anybody? So you come first in this way. And these first four signs really teach us this. Then the next four, which begins with a fire sign, Leo. Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio. These are interpersonal signs. And this orientation towards the world is about focusing on others. It's social. So it starts in Leo. I want to create. I want to show. Who am I showing? The crowd. The audience. The show is for the people. So Leo is that first spark of, you know what? I'm going to start to branch outside myself. It's still very self-focused, but especially as we get into Libra and Scorpio, now it's really becoming very focused on other people. How can I develop a healthy relationship? And Virgo is where we start to pick up the pieces and develop that healthy uh, attitude or that healthy lifestyle to where we can actually show up in a good clean way for our relationships, which are developed in Libra and then glued in in Scorpio through that intimacy. Then here in Sagittarius, this last fire sign initiates this new consciousness of transpersonal. So to be transpersonal is like interpersonal, but it's transcendent. So it's getting ready for death in that what is life all about? What's the meaning for? What's my contribution to this wider world that I live in? If you like, if you understand the hierarchy of needs, right? Maslow's hierarchy of needs, it's you know, at the at the highest places, it is about self-transcendence. It's about our contribution to this universe. So transpersonal is universal, it's focused on ideals and abstractions. And so we didn't even get into the ascendant yet. There's a lot here, as you can see. <laughs> 
I didn't even scratch the surface. I was like, let's see how many of the basics I can get out in less than an hour. <laughs> that was the best I could do. We still have a lot here, as you can see. And it's okay. I love it. This is so much fun to learn because you're learning about yourself. You're learning about what this life is all about. And you're, you're, you're learning about human nature from the astrological, uh, mystical, ancient, spiritual standpoint. You know, it's unfortunate that our culture has forgotten the role and the use of the soul and just how important the soul is and its reality. And it is the most real part of this so-called reality, more real than anything that we think is physical or solid. So it's really worth diving into um, because this is an amazing foolproof system. There's no holes in it. And it's all revealed to us through the light of reason as it dawns upon us as we study nature it's herself nature herself she reveals things to us and because it corresponds with the nature within it just resonates and it just dawns upon you and eventually you just you start to grasp all of this so this is a very lengthy uh packet of information that i created for you here and there's seven of these in total, seven different assignments to guide you into your birth chart. If you want to buy my full length astrology course, uh, you should find that in the link in the description, or you can message me here. And as you buy it that one time, you will get invited to my exclusive classes when they launch in August. So I'm going to have a closed private group of students who buy the course, and we're going to go through the course material together. And it'll be amazing. You're going to really fully learn astrology, all the fundamentals, the basics, the intermediary aspects, as well as some advanced concepts, enough to get you rolling to do readings, because you got to understand how to read your chart first. Once you really understand your own chart, the ins and outs of it and how it works through you, how, how you can see how it connects to your life, to the experiences you've been through, to the ways that you act and how you most naturally are and how it's created certain experiences you will then find the key to read anyone else's chart. You have to see what it's really like to be in your own shoes before you get into anyone else's shoes. And then you can start to understand, okay, I bet those shoes feel like this because you identify how all the signs feel inside of you. And so once you grasp the principles, it's like riding a bike. You just, you never forget how to do it. So if that's your goal, if you want to learn astrology, whether it's for yourself or for others or to just better your relationships, and understand, you know, your best career path or whatever it is. Astrology is really good for that. I'd be more than happy to be your guide to help you with this. So let me know if you want to get the full length course. And I love you so much. I will see you in the next video. Peace.